Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I challenged members of my Discord to hand draw me pictures that they wanted me to attempt to recreate in Scrap Mechanic. And we are starting off the video with this amazing render of a suspension bridge drawn by Benz. Now, at first glance, it might look like your ordinary bridge, but if you look close at uh, what the suspension actually means in this picture, this is actually different than any kind of bridge I've made before. This bridge seems to be made of individual planks that actually have flexible suspension pieces horizontally in between them. So I think if those suspension springs were at a weak enough strength and we tried to drive a vehicle across it, the planks would probably shift and move underneath, which might make for a really cool visual. So I want to try it out and just see what happens. All right, so I'm going to start off building the first uh, big platform on one side, hopefully big enough to fit one of my cars on. And you know what? I should probably spawn in a car to use as a size reference here because oh, this one's actually this is pretty big. This is a pretty big car. All right. And this car is also pretty wide. I'm pretty much going to have to use the whole length of this. But what I should be able to do is just create planks like this. And if I put this on a lift, I can make sure they all weld together. I want to make sure both suspension pieces are attached to one piece instead of two separate pieces. All right, so how big did I make that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It'll probably be easier just to copy and paste uh, a section of that. How many do I? One, two, three, four, five. The drawing has five, so let's go with five. All right, one, two, three, four, plus the original one makes five. I'm gonna leave these on the default. They're just on one strength right now. So they are going to have some resistance, but it's gonna be the minimal amount of resistance. All right, and then all that's left is to build the uh, the landing platform. All right, and one final thing I'm gonna do just for the sake of the integrity of it in the game, I'm going to have to attach the landing, the starting and the ending zone to each other. That way I can weld this to the ground and it's all gonna be one solid object on the ground. Otherwise, whatever side I welded to the ground, the other side would technically not be attached to the ground because of all the suspension pieces having physics effects. Okay, here we go, a new type of suspension bridge. Let's hop on a car and test it out. Proof of concept here. I'm sure all the engineers will be very happy to have some new bridge styles to build off of. All right, here we go. Right, let's turn that off. Oh, this is... Oh, you know what? These can't flex because they're at their maximum right now. I need to adjust this. Yeah, there's no way these things are going to flex right now because they can't actually compress. They're being... They start off in their maximum default uh, stretch. So I have to restructure this because I want there to be some flexibility between them. So the easiest way to do that in my mind is actually have uh, pistons on one side so I can squeeze the bridge a little bit. All right, let's see how this looks now. There we go. Now we got some stretch or some, uh, what's the opposite of stretch? Compression. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens now. There it is. That's more. Oh my goodness. I almost got stuck. That's more what I was imagining. And I just realized I, I there's this huge gap. There's this huge gap at the end here. This needs to be adjusted too. Let's just put, uh, I don't know, just a little platform underneath to cover the gap like that. There we go. Perfect. Such a well-designed bridge. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why anyone would use a bridge like this. All right, fast as I can. Actually, going faster is better. The individual going across the individual ones is way worse. But look how cool that looks. I wonder what, what does that feel like from the first. It probably you don't really probably notice it from the first person perspective. It'd be probably be something you would have to feel in the car, like physically. You don't really see it as much as you feel it. Yeah, this is definitely one of the sketchier bridge concepts I've ever seen. It's a wonder why we don't see these things in real life. I just love how there's just gaps for the wheels to fall in. They just open and close. Cars would be getting stuck all over the place. Like that, right there. That is a terrible design. But if you have enough torque, you have enough grip, you can get right off of it. Look at that, perfectly functional bridge. Uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend. All right, I think that was a successful replication of the suspension bridge. Up next by Spooker W here. Uh, this is the infinite power catapult. Now we've done a lot of catapult style stuff on the channel, but this one takes advantage of a particular exploit in which that our lift has unlimited power. There will be nothing at all in this game that can stop this lift from going up and down. So theoretically, 
if we create a very very long catapult and we put the lift really close to the pivot point it should translate that power to be very very strong all the way at the end of the catapult i just don't know if the game is going to be able to handle it without matter phasing through matter are we actually going to be able to launch something or is it just going to break but that's what we're here to find out that's the whole point of why dip you draw it i build it but before i get building this one i have a huge announcement today is the day i've been teasing it in videos all week but if you are a fan of metal music, a music video and song that I've been working on for the past seven months finally releases today at noon Pacific Standard Time. It'll be one of those live YouTube premieres with a chat next to it that I will be there watching it alongside and anyone else who's there as well. So if metal, progressive metal, symphonic metal, those kinds of genres appeal to you, you're definitely going to want to check this out. It will be premiering over on the Catarinth channel, 12 p.m. PST. Hope to see you metalheads there. All right, back to the infinite power catapult. So we're going to start off with a, a, a base here. I'll even build using the colors, though. The base is like a brown a brown color. We'll have a bearing over on that side. Oh, no, actually, this one has to be plastic. Use blue, which I'm assuming is plastic. I'm going to put a bearing here as well, and I'm going to connect these two at the bottom. That way, these bearings are going to be working together. All right, so then essentially, I just built this out as long as I want. So I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, like this is this is probably going to break physics. I'm thinking something about this just isn't going to work as intended. We know what the intent is very obvious. It should just be an extremely powerful catapult. But anybody with experience in scrap mechanic will tell you that the more extreme you try to push the limits, the more physics stops being real. And it looks like that is actually a really good tiny drawing of a duck. Like, look at that. That's such a good replica. Okay, so uh, I need to actually weld this thing to the ground. Look at how long this is. I'd love to put this in the thumbnail, but it just won't fit. You won't be able to see it. All right, so pretty much... Oh, oh, see, it's already... It is already not liking physics. What I should be able to do is just weld this down and then put my lift underneath it. And uh, let's just do a test here. The duck is attached, so it's not going to go flying. But I just want to see proof of concept if this is even going to work at all like intended. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the pro, yeah, oh no. <gasps> there goes my bridge! <laughs> oh no, why have you done this? I might lose this. If I try to disconnect this from the ground to reset it, I might lose it entirely. Okay, what I have to do is disconnect this and then try to grab it as fast as I can before it disappears. All right, ah, wait, did it, it's back? Wait, right, what if I put the lift like out here? It's still gonna be fast, right? No, yeah, the bearings, the bearings are the weakness of this. The physics weakness are the bearing. All right, here we go, ready? Got it, I got it. All right, uh, I'll, I'll get the bridge back later. Don't worry about that. All right, so how about um, I cut it down until it stops doing that? So I was going to go ahead and cut it right here. And let's see if the physics can handle this. Oh, no. All right, here we go. Slightly shorter version. Will it survive physics? Okay. There was a little bit of bearing flex. Oh, no. This is, this has potential. This one, <laughs> scrap mechanic is so wonky sometimes. All right, yeah, I'll, all right, I'll reset this. I think I'm gonna try this one. All right, so I'm just gonna put my lift here. I can control that from anywhere. It's infinite remote control lift. So then I can watch the duck potentially take off. Oh, of course, it's right in a bush. Okay, hold on. All right, so I'm just gonna put uh, astronaut duck here. And let's see where it goes. Oh! That worked perfect! <laughs> We're not gonna find the duck. <laughs> yeah, that duck is gone. Astronaut duck has probably gone pretty much into space at that point. Oh, we're bringing it back. So, you know what's left to do is, uh, put ourselves on this thing with a toilet and actually experience 
what the duck just went through. Oh no, it broke. All right, are you guys ready for takeoff? I hope this works as good as the duck did. Blast off in three, two, one. I mean, it just kind of launched us almost straight up, but that was a decent amount of force. I want to try that one more time. I think we could get a slightly different result if I get, oh boy. Oh no, and that thing's freaking out too. If I give uh, this thing a bit of a backboard so it doesn't just fall off the back, I think we could actually launch over this forest over here. But let's find out. In three, two, one, blast off. Well, we definitely got a little bit more forward. I don't think we're gonna make it over the forest though. No, we're going right into the forest. Oh man, I thought we were gonna land like in the tree. All right, well, now we're in the forest. I guess I will be logging this as a uh, partial success. I mean, we couldn't achieve a true infinite power catapult, unfortunately, uh, because bearings do not have infinite strength. But it seems like we do have a very simple method for, for creating a very strong catapult and very glitchy. Oh, well, look at the blueprint preview. That's actually, that, that's a lot more of a catapult than I thought it was. Oh, oh, I found the duck. It looks like the duck actually went straight up as well because it's like right near my starting area. All right, well, congratulations on your uh, return trip from space, Mr. Duck. Okay, up next by PD, the German spook mod, we have a drift trike Front wheel is connected to an engine and low friction skis in the back. And we got thrusters for a boost as well. I've built drift cars. I don't think I've ever built a trike that was uh, for drifting, but I've been promised that these are a ton of fun according to the drawing. So let's give it a try. If you're not having fun playing a game, you might be playing it wrong. All right, we got some boosters and a seat on this thing. It looks like there's actually suspension on the skis. So I'll put one there, one there. And then the square mesh block tends to be the uh, favored low friction block. Oh, these are not, I didn't even align the suspension. Wow. All right, so now the front wheel. This is gonna be actually a little bit of the more tedious part. So where do I have it steer from? There, first, let me put some wedges on this thing while I think about this. All right, I'm actually realizing a big problem. The fact that this right now is able to stand perfectly straight and not tip forward means that all of my weight is pretty much on the skis. And that means that if the front wheel is my actual source of power and steering, um, it's not going to be doing much because it's not going to have much weight on it. So I'm going to have to change the front here uh, to concrete, I think. We definitely want it to sit forward. Oh boy, I actually need a lot more concrete than I expected. I am not on the lift and this is still not falling forward. I mean, I guess I could... Uh... There we go. There we go. I'll move these uh, suspension back a little bit to center them on the skis. All right, now how's this feel? Yeah, see, now the weight will be on the front. All right, I mean, the easy thing is just having it, like, I could just have it steer from here. All right, now I, this is gonna be kind of weird. I should be using pipes for this, but I'm just gonna use the wedges instead because they allow me to build at a 45 degree angle and look smoother. And I need this wheel has to line up with the skis in the back. So is that aligned? That actually, oh, that looks perfect. I don't have an engine on this thing. This is supposed to be engine powered. All right, I guess actually the engine can fit right up here. I'm just gonna put it right there. All right, engine, this is not gonna be, this is not a big wheel for this, but it's the only wheel that actually has a center point. The bigger wheel is uh, two, two blocks wide. All right, let's give ourselves a button for boost. All right, I hope I built this as intended. Let's go ahead and uh, power it up here and see how it feels. Wee! Alright, let's add a little bit of boost to pick up some speed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe I, I don't think I built it wide enough. Alright, come on. Uh, this is... This is bad. I built a bad drift strike. Yeah, I think my main issue is, um, I, I did not... I did not widen this at all. Oh, that was kind of fun. Okay. Starting to see some of the appeal here. And yeah, my turning isn't that great. I'm really curious how PD does turning on his. All right, but you know, for the sake of just experimenting with getting a more functional version, uh, let's widen out the ski base here. You know, I might as well just keep the original skis in there as well. Now we just got a four ski, four ski drift strike. All right, there we are. Now we should be much less likely to spin over. Yeah, there we go. All right, and I'm gonna move the engine up even more. All right, come on. Come on, you can do it. Turn, turn left. 
turn left. <laughs> I'm just, I'm in like an infinite drift right now. Oh, here we go. All right, you know what I need? I need flat area. There's flat area over in this direction. Going across the bumpy cornfield shouldn't be an issue. I guess it's an eggplant field, cucumber field. It constantly wants to face the opposite direction that I want to go. Okay, here we go. I guess backwards. Why is this always a thing in Scrap Mechanic? Going backwards just always ends up working out better. All right, now we're in drift field. Here we go. I'm going to try it without thrusters for now. Oh, <laughs> that is actually pretty fun. You know what I think this thing needs though? Oh, that's why it wants to go backwards because this is a frick. This is the only friction point. This is like a tail fin on a plane. This is taking all the resistance and wanting to put it, put it behind the vehicle's direction of movement. That makes perfect sense. But what I want to do here is put m as much weight as I can up in the front. Oh no! Wait, wait, wait! <sighs> that was close. I accidentally deleted my seat instead of the wedge. All right, here we go. Now we can go much faster with just engine power and my bearings are reversed. All right, whoa, boy. Okay, yeah, this is, it's tough to go straight though. This is actually like, this takes some skill. See, the tough part is actually just actually going straight. It wants to constantly, the wheel wants to be in the back. Like as soon as I stop steering, it's like, we're gonna turn you around. Ooh. <laughs> See? It is completely unstable going in the forward direction. But if I go backwards, I'm switching to backwards power now. Well, see, now the problem is um, there's no front friction, so there's nothing guiding... And when I say front, I mean the back of the trike, but now we're at the front direction. But when the, there's no front friction, so there's nothing to guide the front anywhere, so I can't even turn going this way. This is such a weird thing. I mean, I, th I feel like I've built it as advertised, did I not? Like, look at this and look at the drawing, at least if you look from the sideways perspective. We've got the thrust, we've got the wheel, we've got the skis, we've definitely got the drift, we just do not have the control. Okay, that gets me curious then, that gets me a little bit curious. What if I just put a single block that has friction on these skis like this? Let's just see what kind of difference this might make. Well, now I'm a lot slower. Oh man, yeah, they they, they resist so much. This is like, as fast as I can go now. Oh, with boost it helps. But as you can see, it no longer wants me to go backwards. I can maintain a steady trajectory forwards. I can even do a little bit of drifting. Not much though. It's kind of just, it's not as cool anymore. I don't like it. I don't like it with the extra friction. Hold on, is there a block? This is two friction. Is there one that is, this is three friction. Let's try adding a couple of these onto the back. Hey. Ooh. This is feeling like how I wanted it to feel. Now it is way easier to stay going in the direction I want to go and I can still drift without it feeling like I'm just stuck. Oh, wow. I was surprised at how much of a difference that actually made. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Uh oh, I actually, I can't, I can't, I can't turn to the right. Come on, there we go. Oh, I just whipped around. Oh, yeah, the faster, but the faster we go, then the more the, uh, the resistance on the front wheel takes effect. But see, now even when we're going backwards with these extra friction blocks on the end, we can actually kind of go and change direction where we couldn't do that before. There was just not enough friction. All right, well, that turned into a bit more of an interesting physics experiment than I uh, expected it to. All right, up next by Happy Fish Man. He says he put a lot of effort into this drawing and hopes that I like it. And it is an upside down cube. Now, it's not very often that I take these overly complex creations, but like just the ingenuity of thinking about a cube and then flipping it upside down. I mean, just thinking about that, it's like the top side, it's gonna be on the bottom. And then like even further, the bottom's gonna be on the top. Like this is, this is just insanity right here. So I'm gonna try my best to recreate this, but I don't know how this is gonna go. All right, so this is what? One, two, three, four. This is a five by five side. So a cube has six sides. We gotta be five by five on all sides, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so then I just fill in right here. Okay, so check this out. I think I may have actually done it. Oh, I'm an idiot. I. I forgot to build it upside down. All right, so I'm gonna have to start over. I, I started I started with the bottom on the bottom. I was supposed to start with the bottom on the top. All right, you know what? It's probably actually easier if I start with the top on the bottom. All right, so here's the top of the cube. 
See, what it, it, it gets the more you think about this, the crazier it gets because somehow the bottom of the cube is the top of the cube. The top of the cube is the bottom of the cube, and yet despite that, the sides of the cube are still the sides of the cube. So, check this out. I'm actually going to save a copy of this because we need to compare the two different types of cubes. So that is a uh, that is an upside down cube. But look what happens if I take the upside down cube and I just flip it over. Not not once. Now it's just a sideways cube. But I got to flip it over one more time. And now it's a regular normal cube. Like you wouldn't think that this upside down cube could ever look like this. But I mean, all I know is that I don't think I could possibly take this joke any further. Okay, up next by Daphne. A flywheel stopped by its own contraption should jump, right? Kind of a physics conundrum. You may want to have the base as light as possible to see the effect. So it looks like we create a spinning wheel that has a peg sticking out of it. And then we have a piston come out to stop the peg. And the wheel is attached to a suspension. So when it stops, that suspension should compress very quickly, potentially causing the whole thing to... I mean, I guess the question is, does it jump? So my initial reaction to this is if the base is really going to be light enough, um, just spinning up the flywheel is probably going to cause this thing to counter-rotate like crazy. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I feel like a lot could happen, but let's build it and find out. All right, so I'll use this wheel as my starting point. I think we did a flywheel concept in the last YDIB as well, where it was a, fly a flywheel catapult. So we did pretty much the same idea of having a flywheel with a peg that gets stopped by something else, but the thing that it was actually stopping it was a catapult arm that then got flung by, this, by the flywheel, and it actually worked pretty well. But this one is just kind of jamming itself up within itself. So let's see what happens. Oh, and I actually just realized we need to um, we need to make this thing heavy if it's going to be a flywheel, right? So I'm going to fill this with concrete in the middle. All right, so we got the wheel. Now let's build out the base. So the base is supposed to be kind of light, so we're going to build it out of wood block. All right, then we have an angled arm going upwards. All right, so then from the top, we got suspension piece. And then off of this is where we are going to have our wheel. All right, let's see. Oh, this is starting to feel. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm actually surprised. I really thought that was just gonna flip over. Now, what might be the case is just because I ramped it up gradually, that may have been why it didn't flip over. Let's see what happens when we do this. <laughs> actually, is that technically what's gonna happen though? Like, I just stopped it instantly, and that's kind of what we're building into this. But now if I start it... That is more what I was expecting to happen. So, it does seem like I have to ramp up the engine gradually to prevent it from, um, from flipping over on start. Okay, so now what I need to do... Here, let's, let's turn this off for a second. I need to add one of these prongs on here. And then, uh, looks like I didn't leave myself enough room. You know what? I can build a piston right into here. Now, when I press this button, it is going to make that block come out by two instantly. And it should block it. And then we, then we just see what happens. This is the build according to the blueprint I've been given. So, let's slowly ramp this up. Oh, boy. Oh, you know, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what this needs? We should just even out the weight distribution of this wheel that we're going to be spinning very fast. <laughs> just so that nothing crazy happens as we uh, start getting into higher speeds. We want it to be e equally uh, weighted. Oh, man. I think it's just going to glitch through. I don't think it's even going to, uh, at this speed, I don't think the piston's going to even register. Are you ready? And three, two, one. Oh no, oh no, it's still spinning. It's supposed to stop spinning. Now it's just it's just happening over and over again at this point. I can see why though. Oh, wait, what? What happened to the block that was on the end of the piston? It actually got glitched in. That's it, that's it sticking out right here. It got glitched into the other side of the piston. Here, let me, let me hit it with a hammer, see what happens. Yeah, that, that's not supposed to be there. I didn't build that. Okay, let's put it on a lift. See? Yeah, it's gone. That was the block. Uh, let's try this with... Uh, I'm going to upgrade this suspension. Let's put it on maximum strength so it's not really even going to compress anymore. 
Because I think that was, that's what it was allowing it to keep spinning after it hit the block. So let's see what happens now. All right, there we go. And then three, two, one, go. Yeah, see, now it's just... Oh, and it, it glitched out the uh, block. We actually got to see it there. Hey, no, no, no. All right, let's try more of like a mid-level speed that's a little bit less physics breaking and uh, just see how it feels with that. Three, two, one, go. Hey, I think that is exactly what the uh what daphne was talking about that was actually like a jump it wasn't even a rotation so as long as we're not pushing the physics past their extremes um it's actually it creates a jumping machine oh or a glitching machine once again it literally knocked the block off and jump look at that that's cool so now what if i put this back on minimum strength what's the difference at like a regular physics uh setting and go Huh, okay, let's try it again. And go! That is weird. I mean, it's not really weird, it's kind of expected because as this compresses, it gives more room for this to spin again instead of being just completely locked in. So yeah, it does make more sense that it would be less likely to transfer the force so evenly into the jump. But yeah, putting this on maximum strength definitely has more of that, uh, that jumping effect, which is pretty cool. All right. More fun game physics. Okay, then up last here by Hacker Puzz, we have a wedge that opens up and punches you for maximum wedge destruction. So it looks like there's a bit of a punching glove hidden within a wedge with a sensor on the front and bottom of it. When that sensor detects you, it triggers a controller to open up the front of the wedge and then extend a boxing glove out to smack you. So there's triple pistons in there. I don't think we're gonna be able to do triple pistons because they take up a lot more space than you would expect. But this is probably gonna have to be a pretty big wedge. Uh, let me try building the um, punching thing first because then it'll tell me how big the wedge needs to be. All right, so if this is the, uh, you know, the back angle of the wedge, it should probably punch me. I can make this a little bit thinner. It should probably punch from like right here. That'll be right in the face, pretty much. So if I do three pistons, it's that far, and I gotta cut this wedge. Uh, I can make it a little bit bigger, I guess. Actually, I don't know. Now that I'm building out the boxing glove part, this is like really big. All right, this is not the most anatomically correct boxing glove, but that's what I'm going with right there, okay? We got a boxing glove. And now I need a lot of wedges, but are these gonna intersect with the boxing glove? Yeah, there we go. All right, so the boxing glove is going to fit in here. Okay, there we go. And I think I can save myself a lot of time rebuilding that by doing that. All right, save this as its own object. How many, why is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I just need six more of these. All right, and then the last one, there we go. All right, that saved me a bunch of time. So now I need to make this open up. Um, but first, these side ones are actually different because these side ones have to have the wall going into the wedges like this. All right, there we go, we got one side filled in, but I'm actually gonna use this side for reference now. So in order to come out, it needs to be open from this level. So this level of it is going to have to open pretty much has to open from like around here. So this will be the pivot point and this is gonna be the lower point of the door. So the bearing is gonna be sticking out a little bit just because that's where I have to attach the pivot point. But I still think uh, this will be fine. All right, so let's do a quick test here. Rotate that 90 degrees. Oh, that's not the right angle. But as you can see, the door opens up and then these should actually come out on a different type of trigger, like a logic gate trigger or something. Because I don't think the max speed of this is actually very fast for pistons. I don't actually know that though. I guess let's find out. This is gonna be such a long extension. All right, so if I trigger that, yeah, see that's, I don't think that's very fast. If I just have the button hooked directly into these pistons and set them all to maximum, let's see how fast this is. Actually, I guess it's, it's kind of similar, isn't it? All right, but now we need to program it. All right, so when something is in front of this sensor, it'll turn that on. So we open this, and then after a certain amount of time, it'll trigger these. We just gotta figure out what that time is. Let's set it to one second for now and see how that feels. So let's set this to like five. So there we go, opens up. All right, we can definitely do less than one second. Oh no, oh that's bad. Okay, I changed my mind and I'm just gonna have the controller control these because um, we need it to happen in a certain, we need it to happen in sequence, basically. So door opens, then the punching glove comes out because that way it'll guarantee that the punching glove comes back. 
before the door closes once we get punched out of the way. There we go. All right, so let's paint it up. I think it's functional now. Let's paint it up well just with the ground and see how it feels. Okay, I think the punching wedge is finally ready. So let's walk in front of this thing and uh, see what it feels to get punched by a wedge. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> just a little nudge, little jab, just like, eh, get away, get away. Get, go away. <laughs> Let me go closer. Oh, it just glitches through me. See, it's like, it's all, it's too fast, but it also doesn't look fast. It's kind of like, it, I, don't, I don't think wedges are supposed to be this violent. Maybe violence isn't the answer for wedges. Out of curiosity, let me change the speed down a little bit. Let's see how this, let's see what the difference is. Well, we definitely have to wait a lot longer to get punched. All right, now it's just pushing me. <laughs> it's just a pusher, it's not a puncher anymore. All right, we can go a little bit faster than that, though. Yeah, see, our character just glitches through so easily. I wish it could send me flying, but Scrap Mechanic just does not register collisions that well, unfortunately. I mean, this is still a hilariously ridiculous contraption either way. It's just a shame that the boxing glove couldn't be more effective. This almost feels like a modified version of those, like, do-nothing machines that just try to, like, turn themselves off after you turn them on. I mean, if you think about it, that's literally what's happening here. I trigger the on sensor and it pushes me away until I stop triggering the on sensor so it can relax and turn off. Unfortunately, the door got a little bit glitched. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up. So which of these drawings do you think came out the best in Scrap Mechanic? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget for you metal fans to check out Caterinth later on today, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'll leave a link on the end screen to the channel. And I hope to see you guys in the chat. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrap Man, and I'll see you next time. Bye.